Three case studies showing how ICT can support hard to teach topics in secondary modern foreign languages. Using web-based applications to support speaking and listening. Using the internet to sustain students' interest. And using ICT to develop students' self-assessment and learning skills. When I went home when I, after school, I used to go and switch the television on and, and perhaps, uh, I don't know, read, read a comic or something. But these days, the, the first thing they do is they go home and switch on their computers. So they're used to working with their computers. So um, the fact that we're using tools that they are familiar with it, is a plus. These year nines are new to Spanish and they're using some animated speaking avatars on a website. So you choose your character, so click done. And you have you have the character, I choose male, and you have different genres which have different animations, so I could click on him and it would come up. And I'd be talking as a snowman. They get to have a little fun playing with creating new, you know, funny looking images of funny characters. But at the end of the day, they have to record a, a piece of Spanish of, uh, and they're encouraged to use complex, grammatically complex and, and a range of vocabulary. Um, and um, this is really what we're looking for. Well, I created a Voki and I'm just going to record onto it what we did in the lesson what, about the subjects, like what we dislike and like. Me gusta mucho el español porque es muy interesante. Me encantan las matemáticas y el español. No me gusta tecnología porque es aburrido. Me gusta el español, pero no me gusta nada el francés. When you play it, it so exactly what you said into it. Like, no but... nada la ciencia. We use something like this every now and then in our schemes of work. We get to have all the boys using Spanish um, for at least a minute uh, to recap and practice all the vocabulary they've been learning uh, in, the, in the previous lessons. No me gusta la historia porque es difícil. No me gusta la geografía porque es aburrida, pero me encanta la historia. That bit there is excellent because you have no me gusta followed by porque followed by pero. So that's brilliant. Gusta mucho las ciencias, pero mi educación la información. They're not speaking to another person, they're speaking into a machine. Uh, that has a, a distancing effect and, and they, they are able to perhaps not feel so shy. So they, they are able to, to, to just put the microphones on and start recording um, uh, the, the, the Spanish piece. Um, then they, they're able to go back, listen to it, and some of the boys are making the changes. They just go back and re-record it until they get it right. Yeah, I don't know. I might, I might record another one, see whether it's better. Now that I've got time to do that. Well, I'm going to do it again because I mispronounced that. You mispronounced it? And you, yeah. re you noticed this yeah, because yeah. You, you heard it or, or yeah. did you realise as you were saying it? I realised as I was saying it. OK. So have another go okay. and then upload that one. Brilliant. Me gusta mucho el español porque es muy interesante. Yeah, it's good. It helps practice your speaking because that's quite important if you did actually go to um, Spain. I prefer to if we were just speaking in a lesson or something. It's all quite private. You've got your own headphones. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just like the feeling of having your own, uh, your own personal stuff. The outcome is that the, the, the character at the end of the day, ends up speaking a minute's worth of Spanish. Me gusta mucho el español porque es muy interesante. Pero detesto la música. Pero me gusta mucho la biofila, que son bastante interesante. Buenos días, chicos. These year tens are using another live website to create multimedia posters to help them prepare for their GCSE oral. They're combining text, pictures and sound to illustrate the subject of healthy living. 
We each wrote the text as part of an assessment, so different paragraphs on different questions, and then uploaded them onto here. So I'm finishing editing mine and putting my uh, photographs in it, and then I will record it so I can... And then I can upload the sounds to actually go with it, so when people come on it, they can actually hear my voice as, it, as they read it. No fumo. Mis amigas no fuman y mi familia no fuma. Me gusta como el Apollo ensalada siempre vivo, vivo. la televisión. Como sana es muy importante mantenerse en forma. Talking Spanish to each other is one of the hardest things that we can... We, we, language teachers always have to set up all sorts of contrived situations for role plays in which they practice the language. But that's always in a very limited way, and this is the way, uh, by, uh, by setting, them a clear, setting a clear task with a very clear outcome. At the end of the day, they're going, they're going to have a, 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 a poster, a multimedia poster, with their own voices, um, and that focuses their efforts into the speaking. These web applications tend to be quite intuitive. They quickly grasp it. I mean, they grasp it quicker than I, than, than I do. And there's a little play button here which you can play when you watch it, and it'll just play it and you can listen to it. And I just have to upload each voice. And I just put that, that button wherever I want it, and then I press the play button and it just comes up. These texts are much easier to remember than this than if I'm just reading them out of my book. So, And it gives something for you to do while you're learning, so it really gets into your system, you, you get it into your head much easier. It's easier because you can have as many goes as you want with it. With the, once you, if, you don't, if you mess it up, you can just press pause and delete and then do a new one. So if you're speaking to a person, you can't really go back on what you've done. It's live on the internet, so they don't have. To, they're not limited to to school. So when they, so this particular piece of work was started at home, and today they they they're finishing it off. Somehow they're detached from the fact that they're talking Spanish, so there's much less embarrassment, and uh, and it's a it's a brilliant way of getting boys to um, uh, to speak. Because the students' work is saved on an external website. Their teacher can look at it on any computer and add helpful comments. This is one from Max, for example. So uh, I can give him advice straight away. So as, as soon as uh, as soon as he's left the classroom, I can go and have a look, and he doesn't have to hand in his book or, or anything. I just can can have a quick look at what he's done. I would say to him, please check the spelling of. Nobody. Otherwise, well done. The students in this Year 11 class are refining their GCSE presentation. They're using another website to create a slideshow to illustrate the theme of holidays. To get the pictures in here, I've uploaded them onto Stupaflix. Um, I mean, most of them are sort of old holiday photos. Uh, well, first we added images in to uh, help us with remembering what we should say in our presentation. Just recording our speech now. A verano pasado, fui a las Estados Unidos con mis amigos, pero tuve que ahorrar mucho dinero. Mosa y adoro el acento. Cuando hizo mal tiempo, nos quedamos a la casa de mis abuelos y jugamos los juegos de mesa todo el día. OK, I've, rec I've recorded it, so I'm now going to... Um, I think, it, yeah, it's so in my music, so I'm now picking the recording that I've just made up and putting it into the uh, presentation. What we've done so far is the boys have prepared the, the image um, slideshows at home. Um, and then when they come here, they, I've asked them to record the oral presentation um, uh, into the image slideshow. So at the end of the day, they will have a video in MP4 format that they can uh, put on their iPods or take home and watch on their computers or, or just watch online because it, it, it will stay on the website. Cuando hizo mal tiempo, me quedé en mi habitación. The fact that it's on the iPods or the mobile phones, it just gives them access to it, so they're more likely to access it if it's on their devices that they carry with them all day. I did it by uploading my pictures first, finding what the timing was, and then just um, cutting and trimming my oral, depending on what I had left. 
In the exam, you're allowed to use something called a crib sheet, uh, where you have th uh, 30 words. Um, so you're allowed to take that in, uh, but you have to memorise the rest of the presentation, which has to last a minute and a half beforehand. Uh, so this is just an aid to help you rem uh, remember it. Obviously, we're not allowed to take in the computers with us, but this is just like a little sort of exercise that helps us like to uh, helps memorise it. I mean, I think that having the pictures and the words that come up at the bottom are just like crib, uh, words from actual crib sheet themselves. Well, it's something new, so I guess it's kind of more exciting because you use a uh, PowerPoint for everything uh, else you do. So it's kind of because it's, it's new, you have a bit of a buzz. So does it work? Does it produce better spoken Spanish at the end of it? Yes, it does, because it focuses, it focuses them into the speaking. It helps them identify which area they need in, uh, improving, which bits they need to work on, and, uh, and that's something that was clearly missing uh, before we were able to have all these recordings uh, in digital format. The resources that you, you can have, just in terms of the internet, can bring um, a subject to life. I think that's really important, especially for young people who were growing up in a world where image and moving image and sound is so much part of their lives. And technology and digital media is just a huge part of their lives. They wouldn't know how to go into a library and, and use like a, a paper system. How would they do that? I just don't understand that concept. D'abord, Vous allez regarder le clip. Fiona Hilton is using websites that her Year 10 students are familiar with to develop their interest in the French language. This is part of a social issues and equality topic on racism and ethnic diversity. The starter activity was a clip from um, a website, SOS Racism, which is a French um, website, and the, the students were asked to, um, to look at the, the clip and write down as many words as they could recognise. Um, and it, it's like a different way of comprehension, basically, movement rather than just here's a book and here's an article, what, what can you understand? Because you've got the music and the, vi and the, the visuals, it's very much a media, I mean, they're on YouTube so much that this is something that they can relate to. Prejudice, is that prejudice? Yep. Pure is fear, is that? Good, yeah. Make sure, make sure everyone hears, hears that one, Kyoshi. Good. Ensemble, is that together? Uh, yep. Once they'd watched the clip, we looked at meaning, they had to discuss in groups what they thought the words meant. Is indifference, um... Is it a cognate? Yeah. There's quite a lot of cognates and near cognates, so um, that's good for them when it comes to exam skills, saying, like, hey, go for the cognates first, which ones do you definitely understand? And given the context, what can you work out? In twos, if you want to move, you can do. I want you to try and work out what would be for you the opposite meaning to those words. I'm looking for um, ensemble, which means together, so I'm looking for separately. What about um, conflict and harmony? So that we've got some dictionary skills in there as well. It still links into the topic, but gives them extra vocabulary. And if they're doing that in groups, then they get much more than if they just done it on their own. If we work together, we can stop combat of Yeah, stop would do. Yeah, excellent. Stop or combat racism. Super. The students then pursue their diversity project in the IT suite. We're doing a presentation on like the diversity of France and England and England well balanced so in particular. And we're like comparing the two differences like food and culture and and then there's another part of it which is about racism and helping to fight against it. We've made a movie yeah, maker. We've made it. We've got some words. We're gonna add a voiceover, but that's when it's all complete and we're gonna do that for the food. So which one? Oh that one. The little We already knew just from like personal knowledge most of the restaurants in Barnsley. Been sort of included sort of the countries that they were from. On Barnsley il y a beaucoup de restaurants. Carry. Italian. We're doing um, 
about left tabagisma and like we've just like put some pictures on and some uh, information about what it can cause and like saying that just like facts about it. <laughs> we've put like with tabagisma is like one thing, then we've put like three slides with different facts on and then we've just put a picture with it right with like different facts and like the French and the English and we've just add them on. It says un tier de adolescence et jeune femme fumant en France. It's just saying like female, a third of them smoke in France. And it's all because I want to keep the figure. Uh, well, we've got about seven slides on smoking, which is just giving you like a background information on smoking and how many smokers average are in France and what the health risks are of smoking, everything like that. We've been doing some background research. We've researched a lot of the facts online. And we did a French essay and we got marked on it and we put it into a presentation so then we can present And then we've it. sort of like adapted some of the facts from his essays and added them to the slideshow. So they're using resources that are there, that they've got, that they can access at home. They're not having to go to a library, they've got it all on the internet. And I would say that even though a lot of the students don't have all of the packages on, the, on their computers, I would say 90% of them, 99%, have a computer with the internet on. So that's a resource that we have to say, right, we'll use it. What can you get out of that? We found a list of French-speaking countries. A lot of them are in Africa, and that's because that's where the French colonised, but you don't think of Africa speaking French. And then we went on one that sounded interesting, which is Burkina Faso, because no one else has done that. And then we're on the French Wikipedia for Burkina Faso, and now we're finding information about it. Then we're using Google Translate to turn it into English so that we know what it's saying. And then we're taking some of the French and putting it into this video about Burkina Faso. You could equally just say, right, well, here's some pictures. Let's cut them out and put, you know, right underneath as if it was a storyboard. But the difference is, is that you're using technology and, and websites that, that our students use all the time it that's what they grow up with they are more they've grown up in in a digital world I didn't grow up in that world but they have and it draws them in much more quickly basically it's interactive the fact that they're just sitting at a computer screen choosing what they want I think that's really important because it gives them a sense of ownership of oh actually I want to talk about this and it's just more powerful than them opening a textbook at page 15 and going, all right, well, you know. And it's also really up to date. It's fingertip, isn't it? You, you, you're there and you want to know something and bam, it's immediately there. And I think also that's the kind of culture that these students are growing up with. If you want the information, you want it now. Here, they're using an inter-school social network site to communicate with French-speaking students around the world. It's one of my pen pals that... Uh, from France, that I want to get in touch with to see what their food like. <laughs> I got in touch with two people and found out about some stuff in France. They talk to you in English and then you talk to them in French, so you get to practice your French and then practice their English. Where's this person from? Um, Reunion Island in. Where's it? It's off Africa. Off Africa. You should ask her about what kind of what food she eats in reunion because it's completely different um like typical dishes to what you get in france even though they speak french the idea of it's fantastic because this again this kind of website is a way of bringing it to life it's real people that, that the students are corresponding with and they can see pictures of them and i think that for the students is quite i think it's key you know oh god it's actually a spoken language and these people are real and Oh, I've sent a message and I'm getting a message back. Where's the message that she sent back? I sent something like, what do you do at the weekend? Oh, OK. If you don't include ICT or some form of, of technology in, in your lessons where you are not up to date with where our students are, they are way beyond that. And if <laughs> I think you have to be giving that in lessons because otherwise, what are we... We're not moving forwards with the times. I think we need, to, as schools, we need to be <laughs> leaping ahead where actually perhaps we're just dragging our feet.
Today's lesson, or in fact the series of lessons that led up to today, were all about developing speaking skills and specific, specifically focusing on pronunciation and clarity um, and getting the children to speak. And the problem with doing that in, in MFL is that when you've said something in a classroom, it's very hard to go back and actually do anything with it because it's out there in the ether. So in terms of assessment for learning, speaking is very, very difficult to help learners progress. Big picture then for this lesson today. You're going to use your knowledge of French to create an audio-visual presentation on Heidi. Before they start on their presentation, Chris gets his class to establish their own criteria for success. What are our success criteria going to be to make this really good? Fluency. Fluency, brilliant. Pronunciation. Pronunciation. It's like, it's, it's got to be loud so like, you can hear it. What are we going to call that? Clear, isn't it? So it's clear and loud. I'm trying to use complex sentences. Excellent, well done. Let's go. The finished presentation will be about aspects of life in Haiti and the effect of the 2010 earthquake. That was like the first plan we made because like it's like a mind map about what we were like just like jotting down what we were going to write about in my script and stuff and it was just like our first ideas going on. The next stage is to assemble their images and text onto a video editing timeline. You just drag and drop them on. It's really simple software to use. And then you can change the colours of them. You can put effects on things. It's simple, really. We're doing um, the history of it, and we're doing a little bit about um, before the earthquake and after the earthquake. We're going to record our voices and put it into the movie and um, certainly describe the pictures in French. Trim. Tremblement. Tremblement de terre. Mal hermosimo. <laughs> they then record what they've previously written about the subject. Je suis un enfant d'Haïti. Je me réveille, je sens le froid. J'arrive à l'école et je pense que c'est ennuyeux. C'est toi le français. J'ai faim parce que... Qui... Je n'ai pas à manger. Bonjour, je m'appelle Daniel. Et je dois 14 ans. We've just done the recording, now we're going to upload it to Audacity and check and get all the, like, wrong bits out. Seagull. Project Import Audio. We'll try number three. Then, and that should be it. Using this software, they can edit their sound recording to improve what they've done. It sounds OK. It does. It sounds better than you guys. So I'm just editing it to make sure we get rid of all the mistakes. Like taking all the gaps that we've missed and all the words I've misread and then recording them again, then copying them in. But in terms of actually editing anything out, the only thing that you've missed out is here. You've skipped that line there, and you've gone straight from on IET, le tremblement de terre. Right, there's still a little bit at the beginning that we can delete as not here. OK. Yeah, that's probably the best we're going to get it, do you think, yeah? The use of the different technologies, so things like Audacity and PhotoStory, the generation of children that we have now, it's second nature to them. They're absolutely immersed in this all the time at home. Once we've um, tidied it up, we're going to uh, put it into um, a little movie maker presentation here, oh, yeah. which has got pictures of um, like all the stuff which has happened in Haiti. We're going to um, drag the speech into the timeline, which will add it to our movie. And then we can now make the picture smaller to fit in with our speech. And then it should be done after that. It's good because it's like something different. So that's quite good. And it's like it's not that hard to use either. If you make any mistakes, like says there on Audacity, you can just cut it and trim it. I mean, when I speak French, I've got like little pauses in between each words because I'm I'm not that fluent to be honest. And I just go into here and cut it as small as I can. When you put it together, it sounds fluent, so it helps a lot. But when you're talking normally, you you can't really pick up if you said something wrong. Sometimes if you're concentrating. You can say something by an accident and don't realise that you've said it. If you use the microphones, you can play it back and then know that you've done something wrong and you can re-record if you need to. You could listen to what you'd recorded and then you could, like, hear what you've said and if there was one word 
you knew you had said wrong, like you picked it up straight away. So it was helping you like listen out for like bits that have gone wrong and stuff like that and improving like not your vocabulary but like how you say it. But how is the students' work monitored and assessed? To make sure that they stayed very structured in their approach to creating this product, um, we set up an e-learning portfolio, what we call a raffle, which is a, it's um, real assessment for learning, and it's basically just a, um, a checklist or, or sort of some success criteria which we give the children to work through, including um, saying I can, and then a skill they're developing because I have, and what they've actually done to do it, and also a space for them to upload evidence so that they can evidence the steps they're taking and um, the progress they're making in the learning. So that keeps it nice and structured. On the first one, um, we did a, um, like a spider diagram of all our ideas and we had to upload it to here and that's like our research focus. And then the next one is um, like to draft a script but we can't upload anything because we did our scripts in my books. So we don't upload anything there. And then the next one is where you edit in Audacity. So like you can upload your Audacity file that you had, so I'll upload that now. So then you insert audio. If I now go and view this as the mentor, because I'm a mentor for this, for this class, and I can then open up the evidence that she's uploading her portfolio, so I can check just to make sure that that's uh, being done, and I can then look at the quality of that. Um, piece of work. So all of those, all of the evidence just gets um, goes up into the sky into their um, portfolios, and then I can access it anywhere. I've got a web access, so I can do this at home as well. The final one's the most important one, which is your yeah, final presentation. Upload to the internet into a link. So now, when Sir like clicks on our profiles, you can see that we've uploaded the video and everything and you can click on the link and watch the video and then in the little progress box you've just got to click on the smiley faces which one you want what do you think we are green probably yeah because mm -hmm. we met the success criteria and then that's that finished obviously at the end of the day learning language is about communication it's a, and a lot of the time it's about speaking and that's something that i think um we need to develop and we need to use ict as a tool go back a bit like back like there. Well, because technology changes so rapidly, but pedagogy and excellent and outstanding pedagogy stays the same in many ways. It's only a tool.